Oh, hey, would you like to know about GIF Music's best-selling speakers? You come to the right place. Right this way. Before we continue, please like and subscribe for more techie business at Gear for Music Synth and Tech, where today we're talking about monitors. And so we've got five of the best selling monitors that Gear for Music sell. And there are a lot of opinions about monitors. And I don't want to give you my personal opinion about speakers in this video. I think it's much more valuable that I can present you with the facts. You can then form your own opinion and, of course, leave a comment. Um, please, no arguments, of course, because speakers are intensely personal. And one thing I want to say right from the start is how the speaker in the room it's in is a real marriage. So you can take the same pair of speakers and put them in different rooms, and you can take the same pair of speakers and put them in different parts of the same room and they will sound different. So that's what I mean when I say that there are lots of opinions about speakers and I think it's really important that we take into account that where we place them and the quality of our room, how well it's treated, is really important. And at the end of the video, I'm going to mention a document which will really help you um, place speakers in a room. It's a really, really useful resource. We'll link to it below, but stick around to the end and I'll tell you what that is. But I also just want to start off by saying that you should really think about getting some kind of room treatment if you're thinking about getting a pair of studio monitors because what a room treatment kit will help you do is control some of the offenders like bass and kind of excessive fluttery echoes in a room which can spoil your ability to perceive where elements are in the stereo space and also if for example your room is full of bass might sound really good when you're in the room but you're going to deliver mixes that are bass light because you rely on your speakers to give you the true impression of what your mix is. I'll also link to some room treatment kits. There's a bunch of different ones that give music sell, but there's loads of different price points. We'll link to some below. Do consider, in fact, I would urge you, maybe stress, that you should get a room treatment kit to ensure that your room is controlled, and that will allow you to get the best from the speakers. The speakers themselves do have little controls to help us improve things too, and we'll talk about what those are. Um, but yeah, so I just want to mention that right from the get-go. I'm going to go roughly in price order from the most affordable to the most expensive. But all of these speakers, I think, can be considered quite affordable. So hopefully there's something for you. So first up, we have the Sub-Zero 5-inch and 8-inch. This is Gear for Music's own brand, Sub-Zero, and they're justifiably very proud of it. That also makes these definitively like the best value speakers if you look at the specs in terms of what they cost. So a link below, obviously, for pricing and so forth. But in terms of frequency response, the 8-inch goes down to 40 hertz. That's very low. And the 5-inch goes down to 60 hertz. And you can see that the 8 is this one, the 5 is this one. The 5 is quite small, I think it would be fair to say. And the 8 is a bit of a chunker. It's not the smallest speaker, but it is one of the basiest speakers that we have for the lowest possible price point. So take that into account. This is 39 centimeters by 26 by 28. So not the smallest speaker, but this one is 25 by 20 by 17. So quite small. So you've got two very different sizes of speaker and arguably with the larger one, there's probably less of a need to have a subwoofer. In terms of max SPL, that is the volume that they're able to kick out. Now, I'm not sure if this is SPL measured at one meter is a kind of standard thing, but the, um, the number that is given is 96 decibels for the eight and is 89 for the five. Both of those are very loud numbers. Um, you should be listening to music at about 84 four to 85 decibels for eight hour periods at a time. That's like the NIOSH rating for um, volume. By the way, there is a really good app, the NIOSH, or is it NIOSH? Not sure, but NIOSH app uh, is free and you can use it as a little SPL meter. So if you've got a smartphone, you can use that to check the volume of what you're listening to, play pink noise through your speakers, and that helps you calibrate their volume and make sure that you're listening at the right level. You shouldn't listen too loud. Uh, and I know that loud music is really fun, but obviously, A, you can damage your hearing, but B, you also fatigue your ears as you listen at loud levels throughout a whole day. So point is, both of these speakers can go plenty loud and they can go to an 84 to 85 decibels and can hold there all day if you wanted. Now, round the back, excuse me while I wheel this round. Dun, 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 dun. 
You can see that these are rear ported, so both of them have rear ports, and that improves the base extension. Um, rear ported versus sealed, a sealed cabinet can have a kind of tighter and faster base response, but it's very unlikely to have deep base extension. So the rear port is just a really good way of increasing bass response. And you'll see that most of these, if not all of these speakers, in fact, have ports, either on the back or the front. So in terms of connections, you can see that you've got a combi jack here. So you can plug a balanced TRS into the middle, or you can plug an XLR mail in, or you've got an RCA input. So kind of all of the three uh, common offenders. You've got a volume adjustment, so you can adjust the volume of each speaker individually, which is very useful uh, for a variety of reasons. It might be that you don't have equal ear hearing in each ear. I don't, so it's actually really useful. And here we've got room tone controls, which increase the high frequency by two decibels or cut it, and can increase the bass response by two decibels or cut it. And remember me mentioning at the start, the whole thing is that we need to sometimes control bass response. If you have your speakers close to a wall or especially close to a corner, you will increase the bass response accordingly and you will want to compensate by adjusting cutting here. So there are basic controls to let you do that on the back. And so to sum these up in terms of unique features and benefits, I think it's got to be value for money. You know, in terms of what you're getting for the speaker, it is the lowest price point for the most amount of sound. And you've got two different models, obviously, depending on the size of your room. And uh, you can always add on a subwoofer if you wanted to get the fives and increase the bass response later. Last thing is warranty. And because it's Gear for Music, all of the things that you buy through Gear for Music site, hardware wise, come with like a three year warranty upgrade as standard. So it is three year warranties on the eights and the fives. Next up, we've got the KRK Rocket G4. This is the RP7 and the RP5. You will probably be familiar, just like with the white cones of Yamaha, the yellow cones of KRK are like ubiquitous. You see it in a lot of people's studios. I've owned KRKs personally in the past as well, and loads of people rely on KRKs. So what we've got here is like the latest generation of the Rocket series and two different models, the RP seven goes down to 42 hertz and goes up to 40 kilohertz in terms of frequency response. And the RP5 is 43 hertz and up to 40 kilohertz. So interestingly, despite the difference in size, there's not a huge amount of difference in terms of the um, bass response. However, this RP7 can go to 110 decibels, a loud figure that we learned about earlier. <laughs> and then the RP5 can go to 104. So the difference is more to do with the volume that you want to kick out. And it's, I mean, I don't want to be like down on volume. Obviously it's okay. And it actually is important to like listen at higher volumes for a brief period of time, because that can also improve how we perceive bass. You should listen for short periods of time at higher volume, but just please don't do it all the time. Kids, look after yourselves. <laughs> In terms of dimensions, the RP7 is 33 centimeters high, is 28 centimeters long, and is 22 centimeters wide. And the RP5 is 28 high, 19 across and 24 deep. So I'd say they're sort of somewhere in the middle of the speakers in terms of dimensions that we looked at today. In terms of porting, the port is actually at the front, which is slightly different to some of the other ones that we've looked at. There's a couple of that do have front ports and that can help if you place them near a rear wall, rear boundary, you can get them closer to the wall uh, without the port kind of interacting with the wall. And so that can be an advantage if you're placing them nice and close to the wall. Around the back though, there's some very unusual business here. Look at this. Wow, look. So you can see, oh, sorry, I might get in trouble for this, but I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna do it. That's very satisfying. So this is a DSP kind of uh, controller. So the rockets have DSP built in, which can apply like EQ curves and can also adjust the volume. So instead of you using kind of dedicated controls as we've seen on the other speakers, you set it up in the screen. And this gives us sort of finer control. And I'm leaning over here massively, but hopefully you can see that that adjusts the volume of each speaker and we can do, by, do that by small increments. And then if I go in here, we can do things like um, sort of housekeeping stuff, adjust the backlight and contrast. Interestingly, you can turn the bright logo off if you want. I don't know why you want to do that, because you want to have your 
cool K, K logo, lit up, right? But if I go into EQ, you can see that we've got a high and low EQ, and I can come in here and I can pick these different options and they give us different curves, like slightly more complex curves than you would get on any other speaker that we're looking at here. Most of the other speakers have shelves, they don't have dips, and they certainly don't have double dips um, or other sort of curvy shapes, which you get here. Um, I believe that there is an app that KRK um, give you as well, which can help you like assess how these are performing in a room and help you with the setup. Um, but it's just worth pointing out, these have a slightly more kind of enhanced um, EQ curve than the other speakers that we looked at, which is really cool. Like, like will help you get a good response in your room. And in terms of inputs, you've got a combi here that will let you plug a jack into the center of it, or also an XLR. In terms of other sort of unique features and benefits with their KRKs, well, of course, we've seen it's got this really unique DSP kind of screen. That's definitely a cool and unique thing. Um, the cones, which are very fetching, are also made of Kevlar, and it's a Kevlar cone and a Kevlar woofer. So they say, in their words, ensures sonic integrity across all frequencies. It's a known material. They've been producing speakers with it for a very long time, um, and they're obviously confident that it's like the best material they can make speakers from, so fair enough. Another thing which we didn't see on the screen but is in here is a built-in brick wall limiter, and that is designed designed to stop you from playing these too loud and causing damage. So there's a limiter to help sort of limit the output volume of the speakers. And another thing, which is not immediately obvious, but if I tilt these back a little bit, hopefully you can see that on the underside, they have this ISO foam pad, they say, which is kind of just a nice little foamy, squishy pad. What that's helping you do is decouple the speakers from um, the thing they're placed on. You know, decoupling the speakers can improve response. It stops the thing itself that they're on kind of rattling and vibrating with the speakers and sort of doing funky things. That's on there, it's a nice little feature. So it seems there's quite a few little clever things designed to help you get the best out of these in your room, maybe more so than some of the other speakers we've looked at. And in terms of warranty, it is three years, three years for KRK. So yeah, moving on. Here we have the Adam T7Vs. Now, Adam is a company that was founded in 1999, based in Berlin, Germany. Um, and you've probably seen Adam's studio speakers in the sort of backgrounds of various people's YouTube videos. Uh, they're very popular, probably been used to make a lot of techno. Uh, and so, yeah, what we've got here is a speaker that is, in terms of frequency response, it goes down to 39 hertz and up to 25 kilohertz. And for those of you who have paid attention in school, the human hearing range only goes up to about 20 kilohertz if you're, if you're lucky. And so I think that the reason that these extend so high is partly due to this tweeter that we'll talk about in a sec. The argument is that by extending the frequency response, they can do so without distortions. It claims to be a very accurate, um, flat and sort of truthful speaker. And interestingly, and I'll talk about this in a sec, Adam posts all kinds of specs. So there's loads of information about the frequency response and directivity that you can dig into. But by the way, the frequency response is listed as minus six dB. And that means that at some point during the 39 hertz to 25 kilohertz, it dips to minus six. And I think we can assume that that's on the lower end. So they are minus six decibels down at 39 hertz. But it's to say that these are quite bassy speakers. There is a subwoofer called the T10S, and you can pair that with these if you really want to get that techno bass response. Um, but I think that they're quite bassy as it is um, and very accurate. In terms of dimensions, they are 34 centimeters high by 21 across and 29 deep. So they're smaller than the um, sub zero eights that we looked at um, and with quite a similar sort of bass response. The max SPL that they rate at one meter, that is how loud they can be a meter from the speaker is 110 decibels and that's loud. You should not ever listen to music at 110 decibels, sound like your dad, but you probably shouldn't listen to music for at 110 decibels for more than one minute and 52 seconds, according to our friends at the Anai OSH. Again, that's louder than you should ever be listening to music, to certainly produce music for. Uh, and if you're at a club, you should wear earplugs. Um, boring, I know, but, but I'm looking after you here. So um, yeah, they can go very loud if you need them to. Around the back, whoa, we have 
controls, similar to the Sub-Zeros, we have a high frequency and a low frequency boost or attenuation by two decibels. So again, we can use this to control the high frequency response and the low frequency response of the speaker. You've got an individual volume control. In terms of inputs, you've got an XLR input and an RCA input. You don't have a jack input like you see on other speakers, but you could just obviously get an adapter cable. And you can see here at the back, these are ported. There is a rear port here um, to improve the bass response. Whoop. So in terms of unique features and benefits, well, we've really got to talk about this thing, which is the tweeter. Of course, like with Adam's speakers, you may be familiar that they have this kind of um, ribbon tweeter, which is ribbon, like just like you might find in a ribbon microphone, but folded over. And the idea is that a ribbon is a very lightweight element. It's very thin, it's very light, and so it can be moved very fast and accurately. And so Adams say that this um, ribbon technology, which they call XART, X -Art, basically gives you a really, really detailed sound. So overall, we could say that they are very accurate. You can expect really detailed transient response. Uh, and as well, you can see that the tweeter is surrounded by this little sort of like curved sort of port. And that's a waveguide. What a waveguide does is it helps broaden the um, sort of output of the speaker so that if you're not precisely in the listening position, and again, I mentioned there'll be a document I'll link to later that will talk about listening positions, but if you're not absolutely in the sweet spot, then a wide um, listening position provided by a waveguide like this can mean that you get a truthy response, even if you're not quite in the right position. And that's especially important if you have like a really big mixing desk because you might be moving to the side and you're not exactly in the, the right spot but it just generally means that you're going to get a truthier response even if you're not exactly in the right position so that is really useful um, and is definitely a feature of here so more power adam and just as a final thing on these i just want to like single out a kind of unique thing which is that adam i think deserve big credit for posting all kinds of measurements that you tend not to see speaker manufacturers kind of fessing up to <laughs> in terms of like directivity, uh, phase response and timing charts and stuff for these speakers. So we can't know if these are like the best in, and we know that the best is a, is a subjective thing in a lot of cases and it's also a function of what you can afford. But I just want to single out the fact that if you go on Adam's site, there's all of these charts and bits of information that tell you about the response of these speakers. Um, and I haven't seen that for a lot of other speaker brands. So it's to be commended. Um, they let you know what these are capable of and they seem very capable. Last thing to say is warranty. Now, these are actually three years as standard, but if you register them on the Adam website, they upgrade that to five years, which is rather good. There is just one caveat. They do say that products that are no longer in the regular current Adam Audio product portfolio are not covered by the warranty. So the five-year extension, it means that they have to be in production, I believe. So bear that in mind, but very cool. Moving on. So, next up, Yamaha's HS7 and HS5. You will probably be familiar with Yamaha as a brand, quite famous, been around for a little while. Of course, Yamaha are the people who brought us the NS10M, which is a legendary studio monitor designed by Akira Nakamura, and is like just one of those industry staples. Now, of course, it's no longer in production. Apparently, getting the white cones was a real problem. It had to go out of production. But, I mean, Yamaha's sort of uh, pedigree has to be acknowledged, I think. They have been producing speakers for a long time, and the NS10s are like industry standard. Now, the NS10s were kind of known for being like very truthy, which is to say, um, maybe too truthful. Uh, like if you make sounded good on an NS10, then it would sound good on anything, I think is the sort of theory. And the NS10s were sealed boxes. So they had very, very sort of tight transient response, but they did not have a very deep bass extension. And, and so the HS7s and 5s are designed apparently by Akira Nakamura as well but they are modern sort of reinterpretations. They are ported, there is a rear port we'll look at in a sec, and that means that they do have better bass response than an NS10, but we can sort of trust that these have come from that kind of stable of sound, so should be unflattering, accurate and truthy. In terms of frequency response, the HS7 goes down to 43 hertz and goes up to 30 kilohertz, and the um, HS5 goes down to 54 hertz and up to 30 kilohertz. 
Now they do post a particular kind of caveat with that, which is that the sevens are minus 10 dB at 43 Hertz and that the fives are minus 10 at 54. So they post another spec, which is kind of, I think what we should take the frequency response to be, and that's um, 55 for the sevens and 74 for the fives, which is to say, not incredibly bassy, but it depends how you work. You can use headphones to check bass response. And there's also an argument that because bass is so hard to control in some rooms that maybe you're kind of better off like not hearing all of it. That's an argument I'll let you have in the comments and prove me wrong. But you can always add a subwoofer, um, of course, uh, but it is rated at minus three throughout that spectrum, which is to say that it deviates no more than three decibels down. So they should be pretty flat and accurate, you know, for the most part. Of course, we know that our rooms will have an influence, but moving on. In terms of SPL, Yamaha don't say. They don't say how loud they are, but I think we can trust that obviously they're going to be able to deliver 84 to 85 dBs for eight hours. That's a very sort of reasonable level. And uh, But yeah, they don't actually post a spec, at least not the one that I could see. So if I'm wrong, we'll put it down below. Uh, if not, um, you'll just have to find out. <laughs> Uh, in terms of ports and sort of sealing and stuff, I mentioned, of course, that the NS10s were legendarily sealed. Well, maybe not, but they were. These are obviously rear ported, so there is an improved bass response. Um, you can see around the back that we have got a XLR input and a TRS jack input for your uh, signals. There is not an RCA. We have got a um, nice volume control to adjust the speaker, and we've got room controls. And on a lot of them, we've been seeing that they're like plus or minus two dB. This one's a little bit different. So on the high trim here, it's plus two or minus two dB, which is nice. But on the room control, which is actually a bass response control, it's minus two dB and minus four, which I think is quite nice to have because if you do place these speakers near a boundary, near a wall or near a corner, it's gonna massively up the bass. I believe if you put a speaker near a corner, it's like a six decibel increase in bass response. I sort of, maybe I'm pulling that out of thin air, but um, uh, the guide that I'll link you to at the end should clarify that. So it's quite nice to see that you've got the ability to go four dB down. Um, but yeah, quite straightforward otherwise. In terms of like, you know, unique features and benefits. I think we just have to say like industry heritage with this, like the Yamaha are a legendary brand, the NS10 is an absolutely legendary speaker. The HSs have been around in different forms for quite a number of years. So I think these are very like road proven by this point. Um, so, you know, it's uh, perhaps a more unflattering response than you might get with other speakers that has to be taken into account, but um, it's a solid brand. And so, yeah, these should be, should be very decent. Finally, warranty. It's as far as I can tell, and I might be wrong, apologies, but I think it's a one year manufacturer warranty that Yamaha give you. However, good old gear for music, upgrade products bought through the site uh, automatically to three years. So shout out to gear for music, obviously, if you buy your speakers through there, they'll upgrade the standard warranty to three years. Last up, we've got the Tannoy Gold 7s here. Now there is a Tannoy Gold 8, which I don't have. It's slightly larger than the 7s. And of course, Tannoy is like a really famous brand Like you'd be familiar with Tannoy speakers. It's like Hoover, it's a sort of byword for speakers. Um, now the brand itself is now owned by Music Group, who are a um, large brand, own loads of different sort of music companies. And so the Golds are designed in the UK, produced in China, and are just like a kind of nod to the heritage of the speaker, basically. Because there was a speaker called the Gold, you know, back in the day, and that was a passive speaker. It wasn't active like these ones are. So Tano is like a classic heritage brand, but these are really new speakers and should be taken on their own merit. Now, in terms of frequency response, the sevens, they say go down to 65 hertz, and the bigger eights go down to um, 54 hertz. Now, like with the Yamahas, there are two different specs. There's one that is registered to minus 10 decibels, and on these, one that is plus and minus three. And the minus 10 decibel rating goes down to 46 hertz for the sevens and 40 hertz for the eights. So, you know, they will extend down that low, but the sound has kind of rolled off by 10 decibels at that point. I would say that these therefore are like not that bassy, you know, compared to the other speakers. Um, for the size, they aren't as bassy, but they do have some other features, which should be pointed 
pointed out, which is to do, obviously, with the front. You can see that this is kind of bonkers sort of eye of Sauron thing that's looking at you. This is a dual concentric speaker, and that means that inside the mid-range driver is the tweeter itself contained within it. And what's nice about that is it means that you can get closer to these speakers than you can with other kind of dual ported designs or, you know, bi-amplified um, tweeter and woofer speakers because you need some distance from those speakers for the sound to blend and combine. And with dual concentrics, they are just producing the mixed complete sound signature right from the source. You can be a bit closer. Also, it acts as a waveguide, so you should get a broader listening position. And in all, it's quite a useful design. You do see a number of speakers that have dual concentrics at their heart. So it's not a new concept, but it's nice to see it implemented in a new speaker. You can also see at the front, this sort of ring is actually a front port. So these are front ported like the KRKs, and it means you can place them closer to a wall um, and hopefully still get decent bass response. On the front, by the way, you can see that there are the trim controls to adjust the um, volume. And also you can see that there is a high frequency control that has detented. You can go plus and minus two decibels, one has to assume. So around the back, You can see you've got an XLR input, you've got a TRS jack input. We've got a little switch here to control standby. So these have a design where they will go into like standby, they will turn themselves off automatically um, after a period. And you can disable that if you wish, but it's quite good if for a power saving thing, so you don't have to remember to turn them off because they've got switches at the back. Um, and then in terms of bass adjustment, you've got a minus two and a minus four decibel switch as well as flat. So it's nice to see that they go down to minus four as well. And you've also interestingly got an aux input. So this is another in, so you can plug something in here and you can plug a second source in here. Uh, and there's monitor link um, links you through to the other speaker. Um, there is also a little switch to control which speaker is left and which speaker is right. So it distributes the sound accordingly. But the idea here is that you could like plug in an MP3 player or something else. So you've got the ability to have a second source, which is quite nice. Finally, three year warranty on the Tannoy Gold. That's all our speakers. Thanks for sticking with us. You stuck through to the end. Obviously, this has been a bit of a technical sort of roundup, and what I've been trying to avoid is putting any of my own sort of thoughts and opinions because what's right for me isn't necessarily what's right for you. What do you think? What speakers would you get out of all the ones we've looked at today? What speakers do you use? Tell us about what you're doing and, and what sort of things that you'd look for in a speaker. Leave a comment, like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time. Bye. Well, that was fun, wasn't it? Yes, we've come to the end of our speaker odyssey and it's time for me to be put away. Uh, I did say I would link you to a guide of information and that is the Genelec monitor setup guide. We've not actually looked at any Genelec monitors today, but that information that's in that guide will just help you set up any speaker in a room. It's really, really good info. So check it out. That will help you get the best from whichever monitor speakers you do choose. As for me though, it's time for me to go away now, so. Like and subscribe, and I hope to see you soon, if they'll let me out again. Bye.